Coastal and sea areas are popular destinations for tourists because they offer stunning views of the beach and underwater marine life. However, managing tourism in these areas can be challenging due to various obstacles. Some of these obstacles can be predicted, while others may arise unexpectedly from nature itself. It is important to be vigilant near coastal areas as they have the potential to be dangerous. This video will explore the impact of habitat destruction caused by tourism development and the threats facing coastal and marine regions. These threats include rising sea levels, extreme weather events, and the risk of natural disasters, such as tsunamis near tectonic plate activities. The video is a continuation from the first part, focusing on the need for strategic management and innovative solutions to ensure sustainable coastal tourism in an increasingly unpredictable environment. Let's watch together. Coastal tourists face the primary threat of losing animals and plants in the tourist area due to direct and indirect causes. Direct impacts include tourism activities like building villas for accommodation, transforming natural areas into resort buildings. Furthermore, human activities along the coast affect the habitat and life of coastal marine species like salt marshes, mangrove forests, coral reefs, seagrass beds, and algae beds. Salt marshes serve as essential food and shelter for fishery species, while also protecting coastlines from erosion and reducing flooding. Mangrove forests act as natural infrastructure, absorbing carbon dioxide emissions and purifying water by filtering pollutants. Coral reefs provide direct benefits like fisheries and tourism income, as well as indirect benefits like shoreline protection. Seagrass beds capture sediment and pathogens, while releasing oxygen and serving as a source of nutrition for surrounding animals. Macroalgae, or seaweed, offer numerous benefits such as biofuel production, alternative food source, and reducing nitrite-slash-nitrate levels in the water. These plants also provide oxygen through photosynthesis and serve as habitats for vulnerable animals. With so many benefits at stake, steps need to be taken to prevent the destruction of these essential habitats. Indirect factors leading to the loss of habitat include waste disposal, pollution, and alterations to the natural landscape that can interrupt ecosystems and biodiversity crucial to coastal habitats. Waste disposal and pollution were previously discussed in a prior video in Chapter 1, the link to which can be found below if you wish to view it. Moving on to the discussion, when the natural landscape has been disturbed by human activities, it is necessary to make adjustments to the environment to restore it to its original state in order for the ecosystem to recover and flourish. One approach that may be taken is reintroducing certain species of fish or planting seeds to expedite the habitat restoration process, which can be time-consuming and costly. Additionally, creating environmentally friendly infrastructure is essential and construction should be avoided in areas that are vital to the animals that live there. It is crucial to adopt eco-friendly development strategies that not only support ecosystems, but also help minimize disruptions, such as by constructing amenities like walking paths, accommodations, and camping sites that have minimal impact on the wildlife. For instance, elevated pathways can be built to enable visitors to enjoy the beach without harming the habitat. Resorts should be developed with environmental considerations in mind, such as utilizing renewable energy sources, implementing responsible waste management practices, and properly training staff to minimize disturbance to the ecosystem. The volume of tourists can also have an impact on the habitat, leading to challenges for management in terms of adequate supervision. Therefore, it may be necessary to restrict the number of visitors and avoid large gatherings in sensitive areas in order to protect the environment and ecosystem. Overall, it is important to prioritize the conservation and preservation of our environment and ecosystems, rather than focusing solely on material possessions. Just a friendly reminder, do not to take things too seriously. Climate change caused by global warming impacts the tourism industry, particularly marine tourism, through rising sea levels. According to data from the Copernicus Earth Program, sea levels are rising annually at a rate of 4.3 millimeters. In June 2023, 
The sea level rose by 10.86 millimeters compared to June 2022, representing a 10.39% increase. Dealing with rising sea levels requires a comprehensive adaptation plan, including building structures on stilts or platforms to minimize the impact. These structures could be designed to float on water and provide easy public access. Assets in at-risk areas may need to be relocated to safer locations, and natural defenses like dunes and wetlands could be restored to combat coastal erosion. Planting dune grass helps stabilize sand and promote dune formation by binding the sand to prevent erosion. Installing sand fences perpendicular to the dunes traps sand and encourages both vertical and horizontal dune growth. To prevent disturbances to dunes, areas for human access should be restricted and clearly marked to avoid erosion and compaction from foot traffic. A collaborative policy involving government entities, tourism entrepreneurs, and local residents is essential. Through mutual agreements, the government can boost the visibility of tourism entrepreneurs to attract potential investors, fostering confidence among them. This would attract more investors, enabling the acquisition of high-quality building materials and the development of comprehensive tourism facilities. Additionally, promoting a variety of activities on the beach can help reduce damage to natural coastal barriers without compromising visitor experiences. Options for beach activities include 1. Cultural and historical tours. Providing guided tours of historical sites, museums, and cultural landmarks to educate tourists about local history and traditions. Hosting cultural festivals featuring local music, dance, art, and cuisine to showcase entertainment typical of the area surrounding the beach. History enthusiasts will appreciate this opportunity. 2. Adventure and outdoor activities. Establishing hiking trails in nearby forests, mountains, or nature reserves for guided hikes offering insights into local flora and fauna, especially unique species. Creating cycling routes through picturesque landscapes and rural areas perfect for photography opportunities. 3. Ecotourism and nature experience. Offering wildlife safaris or guided tours in national parks and wildlife sanctuaries for observing native animals in their natural habitats. Developing birdwatching tourism in areas known for diverse bird species. Advocating against hunting contests for endangered animals and raising awareness about the importance of environmental preservation to maintain a balanced ecosystem. 4. Engage in water-based activities away from the beach try kayaking or canoeing on rivers, lakes, or mangrove forests to add excitement to your time with family or friends. Plan snorkeling and diving trips to explore underwater ecosystems like coral reefs. The beauty of the nature reserve is maintained through ongoing conservation efforts that require responsibility from all parties, including visitors, to preserve our marine resources for the benefit of all living beings. Five, focus on health and relaxation. Partake in spa and wellness retreats. Take part in wellness programs that incorporate yoga, meditation, and spa treatments in a serene environment. There are numerous benefits to doing this by the beach, where the sound of waves and scenic views create a calming effect that reduces stress and anxiety. The clean water and abundance of negative ions at the beach can lower anxiety hormones like cortisol. Spa and wellness activities at the beach can lead to physical improvements due to exposure to sunlight rich in vitamin D, resulting in better bone health and immunity. Detoxification of the body is also possible through the absorption of magnesium and iodine from seawater vapor carried by the wind, brightening the skin. Nature retreat. Establish eco-friendly accommodation like cabins in a peaceful natural setting to promote relaxation and rejuvenation without harming the environment. Six, embrace agrotourism. Explore the farm, organize visits to local farms where tourists can learn about sustainable farming practices and take part in activities such as fruit picking or cheese making, offering a unique experience close to the beach. Wine tours, provide tours to local vineyards and wineries with wine tasting, exclusively for adults. Seven, educational and volunteer programs, conservation initiatives, engage tourists in conservation activities like beach cleanups, tree planting, and wildlife monitoring to raise awareness about protecting nature. Workshops and classes, 
Host sessions on local crafts, cooking, or language unique to each region. 8. Urban and nightlife experiences. City excursions. Arrange guided tours of nearby cities, showcasing architectural landmarks, markets, and local cuisine while providing insights into economic and community dynamics. Nightlife. Develop nighttime entertainment options, such as live music venues, night markets, and cultural performances to cater to tourists who prefer avoiding direct sunlight. Through offering diverse tourism options, destinations can attract a wider range of visitors, ease the strain on beach ecosystems, and deliver sustainable and rewarding experiences for travelers. 3. Early Warning Systems EWS, play a crucial role in predicting natural disasters, issuing timely alerts to safeguard lives and reduce damage to communities and infrastructure. By utilizing advanced AI technology and comprehensive risk assessments, along with data from observation instruments and satellite imagery, EWS allows for proactive measures to be implemented, ensuring that residents and tourists are well prepared for approaching hazards like storms, cyclones, and tsunamis. An effective early warning system should have at least four observation parameters. The first parameter involves assessing the risk level of potential disasters, identifying vulnerable areas, and predicting the impact on humans, the environment, and infrastructure. For instance, monitoring areas susceptible to flooding and observing changes in storm intensity over time can help in risk analysis. The second parameter entails establishing accessible monitoring and warning services, such as weather stations, satellite data, and seismic activity observation, to ensure continuous surveillance of hazardous indicators. The third parameter emphasizes the importance of disseminating timely warnings to the public through various communication channels like sirens, cell phone alerts, social media, and community networks. A rapid flow of information enables people to prepare effectively, thereby minimizing the impact of natural disasters. Lastly, communities must have the capacity to respond efficiently to warnings, including having emergency response plans, regular training, and well-maintained infrastructure. Regular upkeep of equipment and facilities is essential to ensure swift and unimpeded response during emergencies. Japan is known for successfully putting into place an early warning system. On March 11, 2011, the Tohoku region was hit by a powerful earthquake measuring 9.1 on the Richter scale, along with a tsunami reaching heights of 130 feet, originating from the Pacific Ocean, which is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. This event marked the strongest earthquake in Japan and the fourth strongest globally. The early warning system sent out alerts one minute before the earthquake struck and 17 minutes before the initial tsunami wave allowing many individuals to evacuate to safer areas and avoid harm. In tourist spots frequented by visitors, it is crucial for tourism operators and staff to be prepared to handle natural calamities. This includes being aware of potential disasters like storms, tsunamis, earthquakes, floods, and disease outbreaks from viruses and bacteria, as seen during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2019. There is a need for funding to provide training on dealing with natural disasters. Trainees should be able to interpret data from various sources, such as weather stations, seismic sensors, and tsunami buoys. Some staff should also receive training on effective communication with tourists, especially considering language barriers and different perceptions, including using sign language for visitors with special needs. After any incident or training, it is advisable to gather feedback from participants during evacuations to identify areas for improvement. Different locations may have unique evacuation protocols, so it is important to evaluate and adjust as needed to enhance efficiency. By understanding risks, possessing knowledge, and having the ability to assess and respond to emergencies, the negative impact of disasters on tourism businesses and local communities can be minimized.